Dante's Inferno, Canto 28, The Ninth Bulge, Schismatics, Mohammed and Ali, Pierre de Medicina, Curio, Mosca, and Bertrand de Born. Whoever it could be, even with untrammeled words, tell of the blood and of the wounds in full which now I saw by many times narrating. Each tongue would for a certainty fall short by reason of our speech and memory that have small room to comprehend so much. If we're again assembled all the people which formerly upon the fateful land of Puya were lamenting for their blood shed by the Romans in the lingering war that of the rings made such illustrious spoils, as Livy has recorded, who errs not, but those who felt the agony of blows by making counterstand to Robert Guiscard, and all the rest whose bones were gathered still at Ceperano, where a renegade was each Apulian, and at Tagliacozzo, where without arms the old Alardo conquered, and one his limb transpierced and one lopped off should show, it would be nothing to compare with the disgusting mode of the ninth Bolgia. A cask by losing centerpiece or cant was never shattered so, as I saw one rent from the chin to where one breaketh wind. Between his legs were hanging down his entrails, his heart was visible, and the dismal sack that maketh extra of what is eaten. While I was all absorbed in seeing him, he looked at me, and opened with his hands his bosom, saying, See now how I rend me, how mutilated see is Mohammed, in front of me doth Ali weeping go, cleft in the face from forelock unto chin, and all the others whom thou their hair beholdest, disseminators of scandal and of schism were living here, and therefore are cleft thus. A devil is behind her, who doth cleave us thus cruelly unto the Fauchian's edge, putting again each one of all this ream, when we have gone round the doleful road, by reason that our wounds are closed again ere any one in front of him repass. But who art thou that musest on the crag, perchance to postpone going to the pain that is adjudged upon thine accusations? Nor death hath reached him yet, nor guilt doth bring him, my master may reply to be tormented, but to procure him full experience, me who am dead behooves it to conduct him down here through hell, from circle on to circle, and this is true as that I speak to thee. More than a hundred were there when they heard him, who in the moat stood still to look at me, through wonderment oblivious of their torture. Now say to Fra Dolcino, then to arm him, thou who perhaps wilt surely see the son, if that soon he wish not here to follow me, so with provisions that no stress of snow may give the victory to the Navarese, which otherwise to gain would not be easy. After one foot to go away, he lifted. This word did Mohammed say unto me. Then to depart upon the ground, he stretched it. Another one, who had his throat pierced through and nose cut off, close underneath the brows, and had no longer but a single ear, staying to look in wonder with the others. Before the others did his gullet open, which outwardly was red in every part, and said, O thou, whom guilt doth not condemn, and whom I once saw up in Latsian land, unless too great similitude deceive me, call to remembrance Pierre de Medicina, there thou see again the lovely plain that from Vercelli slopes to Marcabo and make it known to the best to Afano, to Messier Guido, and Angela Lello likewise, that if foreseeing here be not in vain, cast over from their vessel shall they be, and drowned near unto the Catolica, with a betrayal of a tyrant fell. Between the isles of Cyprus and Majorca, Neptune ne'er yet beheld so great a crime, neither of pirates nor Gallic people, that traitor, who sees only with one eye and holds the land which someone here with me would fain be fasting from the vision of, will make them come unto a parley with him. Then will do so that to Fakar's wind they will not stand in need of vow or prayer. And I to him, Show to me and declare if thou wouldst have me bear up news of thee. Who is this person of the bitter vision? Then did he lay upon his hand upon the jaw of one of his companions, and his mouth oped crying, this is he, and he speaks not. This one being banished, every doubt submerged in Caesar by affirming the forearm always with detriment allowed delay. 
O oh, how bewildered on to me appeared, with tongue asunder and his windpipe slit, Curio, who in speaking was so bold, and one who both his hands dissevered had, the stumps uplifting through the murky air so that the blood made horrible his face, cried out, Thou shalt remember Mosca also who said, Alas, a thing done has an end, which was an ill seed for the Tuscan people. And death unto thy race thereto, I added, whence he, accumulating woe on woe, departed, like a person sad and crazed. But I remained to look upon the crowd, and saw a thing which I should be afraid, without some further proof even to recount, if it were not that conscience reassures me, that good companion which emboldens men beneath the halberd of its feeling pure. I truly saw, and still I seem to see it, a trunk without a head walk in like manner as walked the others of the mournful herd. And by the hair it held the head dissevered, hung from the hand in fashion of a lantern, and that upon us gazed and said, Oh, me! It of itself made to itself a lamp. And they were two and one and one and two. How that can be, he knows who so ordains it. When it was come close to the bridge's foot, it lifted high its arm with all the head to be more closely unto us its words, which were, Behold now the sore penalty, thou who dost breathing go the dead beholding. Behold, if any be as great as this. And so that thou may carry news of me, know that Bertram de Bourne am I, the same who gave to the young king the evil comfort. I made the father and the son rebellious. I shifted fell not more with Absalom and David did with his accursed goadings. Because I parted persons so united, parted do I now bear my brain, alas. From its beginning, which is in this trunk, thus is observed in me the counterpoise. Full disclosure alert, my commentary on this is not going to be politically correct. You can leave now if you want. Okay, so for me, this is one of the most brilliant of the cantos. Um, a reminder of why this is truly a Christian and a Catholic epic. The English have Shakespeare, the Greeks have the Iliad and the Odyssey, the Romans have the Aeneid, the Protestants have uh, Milton's Paradise Lost. The Catholics have the Divine Comedy. Throughout the entire Divine Comedy, Dante mentions his own foes. He makes this personal, his own uh, adversaries. And there is a humility as he goes along, realizing that in many ways he deserves to be here as much as they do. He starts to learn to become detached from his own petty quarreling. So there's that personal aspect. And that's nice that we realize that the spiritual life is not general and universal, though it has that property. The spiritual life also has the particular. So if we were to go to hell, purgatory, and heaven, we would perhaps experience a, a different walk than Dante through the same realms, the same Bolgia and whatnot, but meeting our own foes, our own adversaries as reflections onto our own pride and onto our own conceit, and realizing that it's by the grace of God we're not here yet and really getting to walk through but if you were to look at or listen to any of uh, the country songs of the U.S., if you were to listen to half of the pop songs with patriotism, I think uh, Toby Keith, Toby Mac, it's, I think Toby Keith's uh, Red, White, and Blue, you know, the Statue of Liberty was shaking her fist, you know, uh, uh, Uncle Sam put your name at the top of his list. You're evoking American icons. Yeah, it's personal. You're not apologetic. And he isn't here. Muhammad, uh, th th that's what makes this so great. He doesn't keep it to generic schismatics. That's what this canto is about. It's about sowers of discord on a broad level and more particularly schismatics. So we have all the different sowers of discord here, which I'm not going to go into, but just know that they cause civil discord. A political turmoil, Pierre de Medicina, Curia Mosca, Bertrand de Bourne. However, Muhammad and Ali are known for causing the greatest of discord, uh, a break of unity with the one true church. And so all of these sowers cause division, and so fittingly, in Dante's sense of humor, they are divided 
literally. Muhammad is cleft all the way down uh, to where he breaks wind. All right. Uh, others have their noses cut off. Uh, others have their ears cut off. Others have their heads cut off. And so it's a reminder here that if you divide, you're going to be divided. Uh, two further notes. Uh, looking towards the end, you look towards Bertram de Born. And how fitting is it say, does it say that he holds his own head in his hands and it of itself made to itself a lamp and they were two and one and one and two. So that's what happens with schism and discord. We become our own lamp instead of God being our lamp. We become our own lantern guiding ourselves. So the message is clear here. If we become our own lamp and guide ourselves instead of being guided by the Lord, it brings us division in the end. In this case, quite literally. My closing thought is as Dante is being revealed to the sowers of discord, um, and they all realize who he is and a hundred turn around. They say, they all stood still to look at him and through wonderment, they were oblivious of their torture. It's a persistent theme running throughout the entire Inferno. Relief through the possibility of one still able to be saved. Dante's mere presence is a quench. It's a refreshment. It's a mercy to everyone here. What got everybody in hell but their self-absorption. So what can give them a moment of relief but to think about someone past themselves for a minute and hope that there's still hope, even if they're not consciously thinking of that.